Hey guys, it's Nuo Master, and welcome back to another Redstone video. Well, I would say that, but this really isn't a Redstone video at all. I have a interesting creation to show you guys today. Uh, it does logic, it's a 4-bit adder, but it doesn't use any Redstone whatsoever. Absolutely not. No pistons, no Redstone, no Redstone blocks, no dispensers, no torches, no minecarts or tracks or anything like that. It only uses water, sand, signs, and torches. And all the logic is based on blocking water with sand or block updates. And yeah, I, I call it redstoneless redstone. It's pretty cool. Uh, I don't think I'm the first one to do this, but still, I haven't seen anyone do it like this before. This is a 4-bit adder, as I said. So we have inputs up here. Each of these little glass hoops is an input. Uh, this would be one, that'd be two, four, eight, uh, A, B for both of them. And then down here we have our outputs. Uh, one, two, four, eight in binary. And then our carry out is, where is it? Right here. So if we were to do a, an addition operation, such as 5 plus 3, our favorite operation ever. So let's do 3 here, and then 5, which would be that. So we have 3 in the A and 5 in the B. And if I break this gold block, it's going to destroy this entire line of signs, which are all placed on each other. And the water is going to flow down into this contraption. And it's going to calculate rather slowly, because it's water. And this is only for fun. It's not actually meant to be fast or efficient or anything. Um, but it's pretty fun to watch. So, um, yeah, I'll just break it, and you can watch it calculate. And I will explain a bit about how it works later. Um, and you might notice a few things as it's calculating. Like, um, it will temporarily output in non-correct uh, places, like right here. Uh, that's not the right output, but it will temporarily do that before it's cut off again. And we should have our answer in just a second. There we go. That's our answer of 8. So yeah, that looks pretty cool when the water's flowing through this machine and doing the calculations. Um, now let's do another one. So this is only one time use because, well, I can't take this away and have it, all the stuff run backwards through it. That doesn't work. So every time you want to use it, you have to use a different one, which is somewhat of a downside, but who cares? Um, okay, how about for this operation, we carry through all the bits. So I'm going to just stick a 1 in all of these and then carry in. Actually, I'm not going to carry in because that would require me to make it desynchronized. Actually, why not? Okay, so first of all, I'm just going to uh, have all these go through. So you'll just see, it, see a bunch of outputs. And then I'll carry through it, and you can watch the carry process. So the water's going through right now. Going through the first X snore, and then coming down, and here's our outputs. Pretty much in sync. And now our carrion is over here. I didn't mark the carrion, but uh, let's make put a piece of glass there to keep it from falling back out. Now, when I put a carrion through here, it's going to ripple through, and you will see that process. Looks pretty sweet, I think. How it ripples through the there and uh, blocks all the carries or blocks all the outputs for the water. Now, this is actually a lot more complex than a normal adder would be because the logic for water, well, it's one-time use. So you have to have two different types of inverters. One for when you're going from on to off, and one from, from when you're going to, from off to on. So you have to know when your uh, 
uh, data is going to be changing from a specific state, state in your logic. And it has to be either synchronized or you have to allow for it to accept data in the future. So if this is done calculating and my carry comes in, it has to be able to accept that carry. So what I had to do here is actually have some extra logic, like this sand that comes and blocks the uh, output for the carry. That is completely extra. A normal carry wouldn't do that. It would just power the XNOR and turn the thing off. But because this logic is already used, I'd have to, I had to add some extra logic for that. Now, uh, taking a step back here, let's actually go look at some logic gates made with water and just explain how it works, sort of. So this is probably the simplest one, and when I imported the schematics for these, the signs didn't work, so I'll just get rid of them. So this one right here is just a NOT gate that goes from uh, off to on, or when you input something, on to off. So when I input water, that's going to turn off. Uh, basically, that just works by sand drops when the torch gets broken, just like this, and turns off. Now this one here is a bit more complicated. This is designed to output when the water turns off, so it needs to be able to detect when the water is off. And this happens to be really difficult to do. What I had to do is, this red wool here is so that it doesn't get updated when you're world editing, but normally that's gone. So before you use it, you use world edit to get, to get rid of that red wool. And uh, this is a block update detector thing here. Uh, the water should be going into both of these uh, little pits here, but it's not because when it was placed, there was a block here. So when you get rid of this water, before this water disappears, it will update and flow down there. So this is how you detect when this water is gone. So just like this, then we have that, and it flows down there, and we have our output. So it goes, when this turns off, the output turns on. That's our other type of inverter. Now we have to use these in a way that works. For example, um, well, let me show the, the NAND gate. This is just a NAND gate. It's made up of two of these. So if I have one input, Output's still on, but if I have both inputs, the output turns off. Now for an AND gate, what I had to do is I had to use these inverters here, but for this uh, last inverter here, I had to use the other type since it's detecting when this water is turning off. So you can sort of see how the combination of different types of inverters is used in this sort of logic. So if I output or input here, nothing, and then if I input here, that turns off, and then that gets updated. Of course, I forgot to remove the the wool, so that actually didn't get updated. Let's reset this, so you can see that um, because I I said I messed that up. So let's try this again. So that's also messed up. So let's just block that. Place a block here. Okay, it's reset. Sorry about that. So, and this needs to be reset too, of course. I'll get rid of this water real quick. Okay, now it's reset. So, when I place water here, nothing happens, of course. And then when I place water here, that turns off, and it flows through there because of the block update, and the output turns on. So that's an AND gate. Now over here, we have an XNOR gate, which is pretty simple. Um, it just It's just that AND gate with a NOR gate here, which just ORs the water into one of our other inverters here, blocks this current, and turns that off. So if we have one input right here, uh, that'll turn off, and both ones, that AND gate will activate, and we have our output after, oh, I forgot to remove the red block again, but you get the idea. Let's just assume that I did it right. <laughs> there we go. 
And then this, uh, I think that was, oh, this is my uh, half adder. So let's remove this red block first. So this is pretty much the same thing, except now we have our AND gate outputting over here too for a half adder. Uh, that would be our carry out right here. So if I input right here, that'll turn off since this is an XNOR gate. Now if I turn both of them on, that'll turn back on and we will get our carry out from that AND gate, just like that. So I basically just took these components and stuck them together into this over here and made awesome water adders with absolutely no redstone. All right, so I'm gonna leave a link in the description to a world download where you guys can play around with this. I'll make like 10 copies of this adder uh, and you can mess around with it yourself. Let me know if you find any problems with it, of course, as always, and I'll leave these logic gates here as well so you can mess around with them as well. So yeah, anyways, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.